Hi, my name is Samantha Montalegre and welcome to the Maternity Mentor. Today we are going to be presenting the first in a three-part series on sexually transmitted diseases and how they can affect your pregnancy and your baby. This is part one of three. Thanks for joining us. Today is part one of three discussing sexually transmitted diseases during pregnancy. For anyone who doesn't know me, I have been a registered nurse for 11 years. I spent my entire career working in the maternal newborn nursing area, including mother baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I have practiced as an IBCLC for eight years and have been maternal newborn nursing certified for seven years. I have also received specialized training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders as well as perinatal bereavement. This video will examine different sexually transmitted diseases, their signs and symptoms, treatments, and how it can affect your pregnancy and baby. Sexually transmitted diseases or infections are also known as STDs or STIs and are a taboo subject in our society. It's important for women to realize they are not alone and talking about this is not shameful or wrong. A lot of women are embarrassed to speak with their partners or their physicians about STDs. However, it's extremely important to do so as they can cause long-term problems for the mother and birth defects in babies. This video is not intended as medical advice and viewers are advised to consult their physician if they have any symptoms, concerns, or questions. Let's start with chlamydia. Chlamydia is a bacterial infection, often called the silent infection. This is because many people do not experience symptoms. Chlamydia is the most reported STD in America. Signs and symptoms in women include painful sexual intercourse, vaginal discharge, a burning sensation during urination, pain in the lower abdomen, inflammation of the cervix, and bleeding between periods. Symptoms of a rectal chlamydia infection include rectal pain, rectal discharge, and rectal bleeding. Women can also develop a throat infection if they perform oral sex on someone with chlamydia. Symptoms of a chlamydia infection in the throat include cough, fever, and sore throat. Sometimes the chlamydia infection can spread to the female reproductive organs. This can cause pelvic inflammatory disease or PID. PID can be a medical emergency. The symptoms of PID include fever, severe pelvic pain, nausea, and abnormal vaginal bleeding between periods. PID can lead to infertility through damage to the uterus, cervix, and ovaries. It also leads to scarring of the fallopian tubes. Chlamydia can be easily treated with antibiotics. Dosage instructions should be followed carefully to make sure the infection clears up fully. During the treatment time, it's important not to have sex. Use a condom during sexual intercourse with each new partner and get tested regularly for STIs with new partners. Avoid having oral sex or use protection during oral sex until a partner has been screened for STIs. If a pregnant woman has untreated chlamydia, she can pass it to her baby during birth. The baby may develop pneumonia, eye infections, or blindness. Now let's talk about gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is another common bacterial STD. It's also known as the clap. It tends to infect warm, moist areas of the body, including the urethra, eyes, throat, vagina, anus, and the female reproductive tract, including the fallopian tubes, cervix, and uterus. Many women don't develop any overt symptoms of gonorrhea. When they do develop symptoms, symptoms tend to be mild. Gonorrhea infections can appear much like common vaginal yeast or bacterial infections, making them more difficult to identify. Symptoms of a gonorrhea infection include discharge from the vagina that can be watery, creamy, or slightly green, 
pain or burning sensation while urinating, frequent urination, heavy periods or spotting, sore throat, pain upon engaging in sexual intercourse, sharp pain in the lower abdomen, and fever. Antibiotics can cure most gonorrhea infections. You need to follow up with your doctor one to two weeks later to make sure that your infection has cleared. Gonorrhea passes from person to person through unprotected oral, anal, or vaginal sex. The safest way to prevent gonorrhea or other STDs is through abstinence. If you do engage in sex, always use a condom. Practice monogamy, which is sex with only one partner. Get regular STD testing and make sure your partners have regular STD testing. If left untreated, gonorrhea can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease or PID. PID can cause severe and chronic pain and even damage to the female reproductive organs. You may also develop blocking or scarring of the fallopian tubes, which can prevent future pregnancy or even cause ectopic pregnancy. It's possible for a mother to pass gonorrhea onto a newborn during childbirth. When this happens, gonorrhea can cause serious health problems in the baby, including a severe eye infection. Next, we're going to talk about syphilis. Syphilis is another bacterial STD. It often goes unnoticed in its early stages. The four stages of syphilis are primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary. Syphilis is most infectious during the first two stages. Primary syphilis occurs about three to four weeks after a person contracts the infection. Syphilis is transmitted by direct contact with a sore or chancre, which usually occurs during sexual activity, including oral sex. A chancre is a small round sore that is painless, but highly infectious. This sore may appear wherever the bacteria entered the body, such as on or inside the mouth, genitals, or rectum. Skin rashes and a sore throat may develop during the second stage of syphilis. Other symptoms of secondary syphilis may include headaches, swollen lymph nodes, fatigue, fever, weight loss, hair loss, and aching joints. The third stage of syphilis is latent or hidden stage. The primary and secondary symptoms disappear and there won't be any noticeable symptoms at this time. However, the bacteria remains in the body. This stage could last for years before progressing to tertiary syphilis. The last stage of the infection is tertiary syphilis. Tertiary syphilis can occur years or decades after the initial infection, and tertiary syphilis can be life-threatening. Some potential outcomes of tertiary syphilis include blindness and deafness, mental illness, memory loss, destruction of soft tissue and bone, neurological disorders such as stroke or meningitis, heart disease, and neurosyphilis, which is an infection of the brain and spinal cord. If caught early enough, syphilis is easily treated with antibiotics. Make sure to finish the full course of antibiotics even if symptoms disappear. Also, avoid all sexual activity until your doctor tells you it's safe to resume. The best way to prevent syphilis is to practice safe sex. Use condoms during any type of sexual contact. Use a dental dam, which is a square piece of latex, or use condoms during oral sex. Avoid sharing sex toys. Get screened for STIs and talk to your partners about their STI results. And avoid sharing needles if using injected drugs. Mothers infected with syphilis are at risk for miscarriages, stillbirths, or premature births. There is also a risk that a mother with syphilis will pass the disease on to her fetus. This is known as congenital syphilis, and congenital syphilis can be life-threatening. Babies born with congenital syphilis can have the following. Deformities, developmental delays, seizures, rashes, fever, swollen liver or spleen, anemia, jaundice, and infectious sores. If a baby has congenital syphilis and it isn't detected, the baby can develop late stage syphilis. This can cause damage to their bones, teeth, eyes, ears, and brain. 
Finally, let's talk about trichomoniasis. Trichomoniasis is also known as trick. It's caused by a tiny protozoan organism that can be passed from one person to another through genital contact. Less than one third of people develop symptoms. For those who do experience symptoms, symptoms may include a vaginal discharge, which can be white, gray, yellow, or green, usually frothy, with an unpleasant or fishy smell, vaginal spotting or bleeding, genital burning or itching, and genital redness or swelling. Additional symptoms include frequent urge to urinate, pain during urination or sexual intercourse, infections of the urethra, pelvic inflammatory disease, and infertility. Genital inflammation caused by trichomoniasis can increase your risk of getting HIV along with other STDs. Trichomoniasis can be cured with antibiotics. You can only fully prevent trichomoniasis by abstaining from all sexual activity. Use latex condoms during sexual intercourse to reduce your chances of contracting TRIC and other STIs. Make sure your sexual partners are properly tested and take their medication as well. You will need to avoid sexual contact for a week after all partners have been treated. Trichomoniasis can cause unique complications in pregnant women. There can be a higher chance of delivering your baby prematurely or delivering a baby with a low birth weight. Although rare, the infection can be transmitted to the baby during delivery. One study suggests that your child's risk of developing an intellectual disability increases if you have trichomoniasis during your pregnancy. Further research is needed to confirm this possibility. We hope this information helped you understand more about sexually transmitted diseases and empowered you to be comfortable talking with your partner and your physician about them. Remember, this video is not intended as medical advice, and viewers are advised to consult their physician if they have any symptoms, concerns, or questions. We will link resources down below for more information. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.